Hello, and thank you for joining us today on CN Live. I'm Colleen Noir. Rapper and longtime gun control advocate Snoop Dogg has a new video out in which he, surprise, carries a gun. Not only does he carry a gun, he pulls a gun on someone who looks awfully familiar. Check it out. The final call. This the final call. One of those calling out Snoop for his hypocrisy towards firearms is our first guest, Bright, our first guest, Breitbart's Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins. What's going on, man? Hey, how are you doing? Great to be with you. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So Snoop is at it again. Well, I don't, I don't really know what to call him this time because he keeps changing his name. I think he was Snoop, Snoop Lion at one point. Uh, I guess right. I guess that faded away. Um, and now he's Snoop Dogg again, I think. Um, I, I, I think he's a legend in his own mind. This is a side point, but <laughs> I was thinking, you know, when Prince became the artist formerly known as Prince, we all remembered that. Yeah. But when Snoop <laughs> became Snoop Lion, <laughs> if I hadn't written that today, you may have never remembered that. <laughs> the, only, mean, the only reason I remember it is because it, when he became Snoop Lion, it serves as a catalyst to a video I did about him when he did that song, No Guns Allowed. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I did a response to that. Do we have a clip of that? We don't. We don't have a clip of that because I'm not that important. But <laughs> um, I, I did a video response to that video. And I, to be, I got, I'm not going to lie to you, man. At this point, I don't even entertain him in many ways just because, like, more and more, like, I listen to a lot of rap. I listen to a lot of rap. And I grew up listening to Snoop. And, and as I've gotten older, more and more, I start to realize it's all bullshit. <laughs> like it's, it, you know, it's like he went to Snoop Line to kind of recreate himself so he can become, uh, you know, more marketable in that sense, considering he was getting old as hell. And um, when that didn't work, you know, he kind of reverted back and flipped back. Now he's trying to go the more political route and try to make a statement and take advantage of the uh, take advantage of, the, you know, the way things are now from the standpoint of, you know, you have a very divided country in a sense. Um, and he's trying to exploit that aspect of it now. And it's it just it just kind of it, it's like man come on like go, just it's not working it's not <laughs> I mean, um, you're, you you mentioned it though you know 2013 he had the no guns allowed movement yeah. I was embarrassed for Joe Montana NFL great <laughs> that he would actually partner with Snoop Dogg for that but that was when people were still in that emotional fervor from Sandy yeah, Hook yeah and you thought you know what I'll forgive Montana but then in 2015 Snoop comes out and he's like hey. He starts the I am unloading movement, or he's, he's part of it. And he wants you to divest of Ruger and Smith and & Wesson. Of course, Ruger was up, I think, 500%. <laughs> so he wants you to get rid of that, though, in your 401k. It's just liberals Liberals are just weird people. Yeah. I mean, they don't understand. They'll sacrifice our, our good for their ideas or their ideology, and that's what makes them dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. I, like, I've, I've been I, like, trying I've, I've to— I've been trying to— I, I'm, you know, at a certain point, especially when I was in college, you know, I was essentially surrounded by it. Now, I didn't go to an incredibly liberal school, but, you know, nonetheless, a lot of the professors there were, they, they all pretty much slanted liberal. And, you know, no, no, I, I get ideas. I, be, I get being idealistic. I, I, be, I became idealistic when um, I first got into law school, so to speak. But then reality starts to kick in. You start to understand the pragmatism that's necessary to function in this world. And I think what happens is a lot of people get lost in idea. And um, and don't understand the the, the the more pragmatic components of society and reality, right. and, you know. And but then with with Snoop Dogg, you also just have the raw hypocrisy. Like he wants you to give up your guns. <laughs> he wants you to give up your gun company investment. And then he wants to aim a gun yeah. at a clown that looks a whole lot like our president and pull the trigger. And if you listen to the lyrics of that song, mm -hmm. it's not. I mean, of course, the president is the key issue here, but. Uh. It seems like a lot of support for shooting police, or at least no condemnation for shooting police in that song. It is this coming from the guy who was pro gun control in 2013 and 2015. <laughs> it's weird. It's really weird. It, it it's it is. And then I think the I think the problem is we keep letting people get away with this type of hypocrisy. We 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 allow it. We facilitate it in many ways. Um, right. You know, and and you know, I said earlier at the beginning of the show, I don't even bother anymore. But I, I that I mean that's that's almost irresponsible of me. 
because right. we've got to get to a point where we start checking people on blatant hypocrisy because it'll devolve into just sheer chaos where like no one no one is held for any accountability for what they say or what they do. Whenever I say something that is either wrong or incorrect, someone fact checks me. I I own it. <laughs> like it's it's like okay, I messed up. I I, I made a mistake. I'm a moron. I fix it. Or if I right. say something that, that contradicts myself, I do the same thing. But but now we have somebody, like you pointed out, and, and, and on one side of his mouth, he's telling everybody, put the guns down, divest yourself, of, uh, divest, uh, divest your money from anything having to do with firearms. And then we backdoor, and then you put out another song after the fact when you realize that that, that whole facade wasn't going to work for you monetarily. And then you backdoor and try to take another route and, 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 and basically engage in or insinuate the exact same behavior that you were speaking out against a couple of years ago. Right. And, and, you know, and, and, and I know plausible, I know plausible deniability lyrics when I hear them. Right. right. You know, everything is masked under this, this kind of, uh, of this, you know, the clowns and so forth and so on. Um, I know the lyrics. I, I, I know the undertones. I know exactly what he was saying in the song. And, and it was a spouse in violence in many ways. So right. it, it, and it was kind of, you know what? Usually when I talk about issues like this with respect to to music, movies and things like that, there's a there's a less holding of accountability in a sense of that's art, you know, projecting right. itself on the screen. However, when you start using that art to engage in very real world issues, then I can right. hold you accountable on the same level. Right. And so it just, it, I don't know, but I, I guess they feel like because, you know, it's music, it allows, I, I always say it all the time, it's the, the, the comedian plausible deniability card, the rapper plausible deniability card, the actor plausible deniability card. When they say something, everybody agrees with it. It's like, yeah, I made a statement. I'm strong, I'm powerful, and I was brave. And then when they right. say something nobody likes, it was like, it was just jokes. What, right. it was just, it was just art. It was just a movie. It was just a song. I was like, nah, you can't have it both ways. But deniability or not, and I agree with you, but. When you talk about killing police to the level he did, and then he, he does say things like, well, you're going to do what you're going to do. I'm not telling you what to do. He says things. But just the we're coming out of that climate. Under Obama, police yeah. were, were targets. We need to change that. And we certainly don't need to be targeting people who we depict looking like our president. I mean, I don't know. Snoop Dogg is either desperate to sell a record, really mm -hmm. desperate, or he's made so much money, he just doesn't care. And he's going to make every statement he wants to make, but he's going to end up getting attention from people he doesn't want attention from. And by that, I mean Secret Service and others. No. I know Secret Service has already said that they're paying attention to what he's doing. I don't know if that means they're going to knock on his door, but you just can't do this kind of stuff in a society, yeah. not a civilized society. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's... it's I, I don't care what your political al uh, alignments are, affiliations are. You know, the president of our country is president of our country. I didn't. Right. I, 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 I didn't think it was okay when they were when when I saw certain things about uh, certain certain things people were depicting about Obama. It's not okay now just because you disagree with this particular president to do the very same things that you were getting on other people for doing when the president right. who was in office you agreed with. Um, right. And so to 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 depict something like that to me, I I, I think it's unacceptable personally. Well, I think you know we were talking off air. I was talking off air with some of the folks. They said that uh, Snoop was on ESPN today, and ESPN didn't mention anything about this. So obviously he's going to get a pass. Of course, ESPN's as liberal as it gets. Yeah. So he's going to get a pass from everybody except NRA TV, Breitbart News, and others who who will keep pushing this and tell you know people just need to think. If I say one thing and I and I, I'm so committed to it that I change my name, but then a few years later I'm 100 percent opposite. Then. Yeah. You got to think about it. I, I'm like you now. I'm kind of done with the guy, and and I'm like you. I used to like him, but I can't do it. It's like it's like Bruce Springsteen to me. Yeah. I can't do Springsteen. He sings about the working man, and he supports every tax they can put on the back of him. Yeah, and I'm just I'm done with it. Yeah, it's 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 we've allowed. I personally think we've allowed the, the entertainers of this world to have too big of an influence on the way people develop their political ideologies, the socioeconomic ideologies, all of those things. We, we attribute some, some weird sort of, 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 of acquired knowledge that they have just sheerly on, based on the fact that they entertain us and provide right. some source of entertainment. Um, that, that's, we've got to understand that's where it begins and that's where it stops. If you're an entertainer, they're an entertainer. Now, they're allowed to have their opinions. I'm, I'm all for it. You want to give it, you share your opinions, fine. But there isn't some, there isn't some like higher stratospheric aspect to their opinion that, that makes them the authority figure on an issue the way they project themselves to be. And it, right. and it gets to a point where it's just like, God, damn it, like, stop. 
Just stop, right. man. Because I you're... mean, record sales don't make you a law professor. It, That's what it, you're saying. I agree. Pretty much. <laughs> But, I mean, right. here we are, and, you know, we have to deal with it. And I, I think that's why, you know, you have people like you, people like me and other people out there. We, I mean, we, we have to check it. Whether whether they are people we grew up listening to, whether they are people who I may even like. If, 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 you're, if what's coming out of your mouth is, is contrary to what I believe to be the benefit of society as a whole, I'm going to call you on it. And I hope right. that anybody who follows me, anybody who likes me, and they feel the same way, you do the same thing to me. Hold me to the same accountability level, regardless. Um, right. But but a lot of people feel that they are above and beyond that and shouldn't be held to that. Right. I agree. You know, when I was doing my Ph.D. studies, I'll never forget one of my professors, and he, he stands out as one of the few. But at the beginning of the semester, he said, you know what, I might say something in this class that's not accurate. You never hear a professor say that. Never. He said, if, he said, if I do, call me on the carpet because I don't want to teach you things that aren't factual. Yeah. And that taught me a lot. I'm like, here's this guy. He's willing, always willing to say, I don't know. That was his answer sometime. I don't know. Always willing to say, you know what, I was wrong. Here's what I should have said. This is right. And that's what you were talking about. And I think that's how we have to live if, if we're going to do these things that we do for a living. But at the same time, I think that when we are right, and we are right on Snoop Dogg, we don't need to <laughs> We don't yeah. need to back down. We need to keep pushing and hopefully build up enough people pushing that other artists think twice before they, they do open their mouth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, man. Um, I, I hope you join us again like I always do. Um, right on. Yes, sir. And you have a good one. You too. Good to be with you. All right, man. You take it easy. Coming up after this quick break, an expert weighs in on why women and blacks are buying more guns. 